Episode 8, The Monarch Suite for me. George, how many tables have you booked? Lex asked. Five standards. Standards? Not the lowest standard, right? Ashley asked, concerned. The minimum standard at the Palace Garden was a few hundred dollars, so five tables would be a little more than fifteen hundred dollars. Ashley wasn't satisfied. He gave Lex and Alex a subtle look, signaling for them to step forward. I say, George, now you're finally able to treat everyone to a meal. Can't you be a bit more generous? Also, there are about 50 people in our class. Do you think five tables is enough? With their encouragement, everyone else started to question George. The manager rolled his eyes and then took a step forward. Mr. Rudd has chosen wisely with our standard. In our most exclusive room, each table costs $1,500. Everyone, including Terry, looked stunned. George, on the other hand, was so happy that his heart was about to burst. The restaurant manager sure knew how to talk. I'll definitely leave him a generous tip. In fact, the room was perfect. There were 10 people at a table, so 50 people could easily sit. There was still plenty of space left. A few more people wouldn't have been a problem. Terry originally wanted to slap George's face to show everyone what a joke he was. He hadn't expected that instead he would get slapped by a taxi bill. But Maddie was still beside him. He couldn't let her look down on him. He must be the top dog, whatever the cost. Since we're going Dutch, George, I dare you to switch to a top-tier room. I'll show you how truly rich people dine. I heard that the best room here is the Overlord Suite. Terry was still livid and unwilling to lose face. The Monarch Suite, the manager corrected him. But it's only available for those with titles and such like. It's not for students. Is the manager implying I'm not important enough? Terry wondered. They looked at each other, and everyone began to mutter in hushed tones. Didn't Terry say that his father runs a big company and makes several million a year? Someone said. He seems to know quite a few powerful people in the business world, but maybe he's actually not that rich, came the whispered response. Terry's face turned a shade of pale green as he glared at the manager. Someone with status? Surely I must qualify then. Terry, what he said is correct, Maddie interjected. Very few people are privileged enough to access the monarch suite. Basically, it's only for royalty. Oh, and the president. Even my father can't get in. Not only was she the college beauty, but she was also very wealthy. Through her family, she had met a lot of influential people. The monarch suite at the palace garden was legendary among the upper classes. Maddie's father had mentioned to her more than once that money alone wasn't enough for you to be received into the monarch suite. Everyone knew that she was rich, so they didn't doubt she knew what she was talking about. Terry, you heard them. The monarch suite can only be used by those with titles. Ordinary people like us won't be admitted, George said laughingly. Of course, it's fine if you're an important guest like Mr. Rudd. However, only Mr. Rudd is allowed to enter, no one else, unless he specifically requests it. George was shocked. He looked at the manager questioningly. It was his first time dining there. How did he become an esteemed guest? Could it be that there's an existing relationship between the restaurant and my family? George wondered. The manager met George's gaze and hid a faint smile. Maddie was shocked. She looked at George with profound amazement. Who in the world is this guy? Wow, George thought. The monarch's sweet. But do I want to dine alone? Terry's expression changed slightly as he cursed. He's just a poor guy. What kind of status can he have? Hearing Terry's words, the manager frowned slightly and spoke seriously. Mr. Rudd has reserved five standard rooms for you, and he was already listed as a VIP guest. If you were to spend as much as he will for this meal, you would naturally receive the same treatment. What the heck, George? Not bad. Terry's heart skipped a beat. Spending so much money in one go. Perhaps he wasn't such a stupid lowlife after all. He must have secretly bribed the manager. Otherwise, why would he praise him so highly? Alice felt that something was amiss and secretly observed George and the manager. George gave the manager a grateful look. George, he's already said that you're a VIP. You can go to the Monarch Suite to eat. Since you're an esteemed guest, why don't you put in a good word for us? Or maybe you could pay a bit more and bring everyone to the Monarch Suite for dinner, she snorted coldly. 
Since George has a solution, let's do it. Come on, let's check out the Monarch Suite for a while. Ashley spoke up first and stood to lead the way. George stood on the spot for a long moment and observed the scene coldly. George, why are you just standing there? I've already said I'm willing to go Dutch with you. What are you afraid of? Terry shouted. Go on. I didn't say no. I just thought of something and was a little distracted, George said. Mr. Rudd, I'll send someone to chase them out, the manager said smartly. No need. Since they want to go, let them go, George replied. Since Terry and the others wanted to play, he would accompany them to the end. Oh, and thank you for what you just said now. George took out $1,000 from the black plastic bag and handed it to the manager. Mr. Rudd, I can't accept this, the manager responded in shock. This is what you deserve. Take it. George was feeling generous, but he saw the manager didn't want to accept it, so he stuffed the money into the man's pocket and quickly left. George, you came at the right time, Terry greeted him. I just ordered two giant deep sea lobsters, five bottles of Dom Perignon, and two bottles of their finest claret. They're top grade and taste quite delicious. Sure, but we have more people, so I'm afraid that won't be enough. Why don't we have a bottle of champagne each? And two bottles of red wine won't suffice. We'll need at least ten bottles, George said grandly as he counted everyone in the room. Since you want to play, let's play big. There's plenty of money in the Rudd family fund for me to play you, Terry. Terry's expression changed dramatically, and he didn't say anything for some time. What, can't afford it? George looked at Terry mockingly. George, stop trying to act cool. Do you know how much these things cost? Terry said with a cold expression. You want to talk about money? I treat everyone to a meal, and you suggest I have a bad relationship with money? George asked, raising an eyebrow. George didn't care about the price. For a person with a black card, did the price really matter? However, he still deliberately asked, Those things, how much are they? $100 a lobster, $200 for the French foie gras, and $800 for the claret, Terry sneered as he answered. Whoa! George covered his mouth in shock. Huh, now you know fear, right? Terry said, the sneer still on his face. George, pretending to be calm won't help you. Dining at the Palace Garden is more than you can afford with your 50000 Maddie said mockingly. Terry had thought that George would be scared after hearing the price of the items he had ordered, but George waved his hand and said to the waiter, Just keep it coming. Yes, sir. I'll report to the kitchen, the waiter said respectfully. Although he didn't know who this ordinary-looking Mr. Rudd was, the manager had repeatedly requested that they serve him well.